I, I, I just got home. I wanted to take a few days off before I started making videos about my observations in Hawaii. Why, Ranty? Why can't I just have a few days? Play the intro. Most of you have probably heard of Ranty Flat Earth. If not, please do go check out his channel. On multiple occasions, Randy has made videos to disprove the globe, but provided obvious evidence of curvature while simultaneously creating a false narrative to explain the evidence that he has given us. Well, today we're going to take a look at a very short video of his where he tries to take conspiracy cats to task about angular resolution and fails gloriously. But first, let's hear the video in its entirety to ensure that none of this is taken out of context. So, when do two bricks become one brick? When they try to fill the same data point. In other words, when they both want more than 50% of their data in one pixel. The data for each is incomplete. It is missing. And so, as a function of optics, portions of the data from each brick is processed at one merging point. This is called the diffraction limit. Two lights become one light, two bricks become one brick, and at a bigger and bigger distance, two trees become one tree, and so forth. So let's listen to Conspiracy Cats to make sure that he understands this concept. Essentially, diffraction limit, um... When, when, when light passes through an aperture, we get a diffraction pattern. You know, the central disk of that we're going to call the area's disk. And we have these, these areas of uh, constructive and destructive interference around it. We get these. Uh, and, and, and light coming from any part of an object, any part of an object, not just the bottom, not just the top, but literally every single part of an object as it passes through the aperture is going to, is going to create one of those diffraction patterns. Now, if the diffraction patterns get so close that the first minima of one uh, lies underneath the <coughs> first minimum, uh, underneath the maximum of the, the, the next one, then you can't resolve them. You can't tell them apart. You can't tell that those two objects are two objects anymore. They will appear as one object. So it appears that he does indeed understand that two objects will appear as one object when the diffraction limit is reached and breached. So my question is a simple one, really, to you conspiracy cats. Where in your sphere mathematics is this accounted for? Now, I'm not going to go into the minutia of diffraction. Thankfully, Bob the Science Guy has already deconstructed this video for that specific purpose. Make sure you go check that out. Link is in the description below. I personally have several issues with this video. Firstly, did you notice the thumbnail? Conspiracy Cats agrees that objects will disappear from the bottom up. Well, Randy, literally nowhere in this video did Conspiracy Cats discuss images disappearing from the bottom up. And literally nowhere in this video did you make any statement about anything disappearing from the bottom up. Sandy literally published a video where he and Conspiracy Cats agreed on what diffraction is, but then lies in the thumbnail to fool his followers. I even confronted Randy on this in the comments, and his response was a little underwhelming. Question, why did your thumbnail say that he agreed that diffraction causes things to disappear bottom up, but the video literally said nothing of the sort? Hello, my name's Ranty Flat Earth, and I'm here to tell you that it's exactly the same thing, but I termed it a little bit better, because as you can tell, CC and alike try to use fancy words and say as little as possible. I just say it so we can cut through all the nonsense speak. Well, Randy, you aren't starting out very good, man. If you need to blatantly lie in your videos, maybe you should go back to just making observations that prove the globe. The second issue I have with this video is the conclusion that Randolph draws from his flawed thinking. So, it appears that he does indeed understand that two objects will appear as one object when the diffraction limit is reached and breached. So my question is a simple one really, to you conspiracy cats. 
Where in your sphere mathematics is this accounted for? What exactly are you talking about, Sandy? You're comparing apples and hand grenades. Spherical geometry in no way relies upon any form of optics. It is purely based on the geometry of a ball. So to make you happy, maybe we should add the diffraction limit to the spherical calculator. But Sandy, what baseline should we use? The diffraction limit of the human eye? Or a smartphone? Or one of the 5,000 other commercial cameras sold around the globe? Or a telescope? Or maybe even your own personal P1000? Which should we include in this mathematics, Randy? Or maybe you're just trying to make a sick burn on conspiracy cats, but ended up proving the globe once again. Now, my last point. How about we actually break down, simple style, what the diffraction limit is, using your own words. And a video that I shot myself. Yes, Candy, at a long distance, two trees become one blob that some may identify as a tree. Now, as a backdrop and demonstration, let's look at a video that I shot in Hawaii last week of a boat coming up over the curve. When you're discussing the diffraction limit, you're looking at single points side by side at the same distance. On this ship, I've added two sets of trees side by side, two on top, two on bottom. The distance from the observer to both sets is effectively the same, plus or minus a few dozen meters. Now at a close distance, all four trees are able to be differentiated by my camera, which is a P1000. And as the distance grows, these two sets of trees get closer and closer until they do pass the diffraction limit and you can only resolve one. My camera is no longer able to tell the difference between one and the other and we only see one point now. Now where flat earth pseudoscience and reality differ is how we are able to observe these two different data sets. Where Conspiracy Cat said that the first minima of one uh, lies underneath the <coughs> Uh, underneath the maximum of the, the, the next one. Ranty literally took that to mean beneath. As in, the trees on the bottom disappear before the trees on the top because they're beneath. Which is one of the most disingenuous, if not dishonest statements I have heard in a long time. Well, Candy, my simpleton brother, he's talking about the wavelengths of interference and diffraction patterns not physical objects beneath one another. Yes, these two trees are beneath the other two. But there are no laws of optics which lay claim on the bottom pair, but not on the top, that cause the bottom pair to disappear first, unless you can provide a citation that I'm not aware of. But if you're so easily confused about the word beneath, hopefully this video will help out just a little bit. In the first case here, each object produces a diffraction pattern, but they're separated enough that you can really tell them apart. In fact, there's very little to no overlap in this case. In this case here, however, the diffraction patterns are so close to each other that it just looks like there's one blurry pattern and you're not sure what you're looking at. And the limit of resolution is this case here and is given by the Rayleigh criterion. It says that the distance between the two central peaks has to be at least half the width of a central peak. In other words, the central peak here must be right above the first minimum of the other peak, and vice versa. The maximum here of this central peak has to be exactly above the first minimum of the other diffraction pattern. And if that is the case, then both patterns are resolved and you can tell them apart. You see, Randy, when discussing the Riley criterion and smart people using the words above and below, they don't mean physical objects above and below. Both sets of trees are affected by the same principles of optics. The bottom two disappear because something is physically blocking them from my camera and we're not able to see them. And that something 
is what here in the real world we like to refer to as curve. Thank you everyone for joining me again this week. I'd like to take a second just to thank a few people that have been my longest and loudest supporters throughout my endeavor on YouTube. Dan Champion, Farmer's Boy, Alan Evans, Terry the Kiwi, Bob the Science Guy for giving me my first plug and the biggest boost of subscribers I've had so far, Linda and Mike Bertelson, Heat Shield, Kristen Frost Laser Beams, and Arctic Haze. And there's been many, many others that have been following me along on this adventure. Thank you so much for believing in me and giving me some of your time, because I know how valuable it is. For anybody that's new to my channel, thank you for joining along. I encourage you to go back and check out some of my older videos. Most of them are generally educational based, so they should stand the test of time. If you haven't yet, please click the like button, subscribe, and if you think I'm worth it, leave me a comment and share with a friend. As we move forward over the next couple of weeks, I have several other observations from Hawaii that I want to make some videos about that I think are going to be pretty good. And obviously, we've got the conclusion to the Cavendish experiment. Expect an update video on that soon. Thanks for joining me, and as always, stay flat.